Welcome back to Seriously Funny. I'm your host, Mashnor Kabir, and I know everything and understand nothing. This week, we sit down and call all of you children and destroy your dreams. So, the same as every week. The first topic on the hot plate is maturity. Uh, Maturity is a topic I thought would take about an entire episode, and then while I was scrolling through my patent-pending idealist, Uh, worth $1 million to $5 million, depending on how good at negotiating I'm feeling on the day. Uh, But yeah, maturity. There's a slight chance I've talked about it before, but reusing content is kind of what content creators do. So might as well jump on the bandwagon, baby. Maturity is one of those ideas that we all use, that we all kind of understand or know about, but can't really put into words, at least when I first thought about it and I went to define it. I was kind of at a loss. And also, I moved my desk, and so I don't know how the sound is bouncing off of surfaces now. If it sounds different, that's why. Uh, We'll see how it is in like 10, 19 minutes when I finish this and I have to listen back and edit through the episode. But yeah. Uh, Anyways, putting things into words is my job. Uh, And so, you know, putting all of it into words for all of you immature people that go around calling other people immature because you think you're so mature. uh, Now that we have some semantic satiation going on, uh, that's when you hear or say a word so much that it starts to lose meaning. Uh, You know, pick a word and say it for a while or repeat some sort of tongue twister like red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather for a little bit. And you'll see that the words stop sounding like words and they just sound like sound. It's pretty interesting and weird and fun, but I don't know, say a word a lot or hear a word a lot, your brain will just kind of like, uh, how you say, like habituate to it and then it kind of falls apart. Satiation. Anyways, uh, with my big fat neurons, I take what most people can't describe and I describe it. So let me tell you what shape the color blue is. I heard that recently from a buddy and thought it was a great connection to how describing enlightenment felt. It was it was hilarious. But yeah, like we do on our Pokemon quest to define all of the words. This is another one. Uh, And if you haven't noticed, yes, indeed, I am stalling for time. Sometimes I say dumb things like right now because I I need more content. Uh, This one might struggle to hit 20 minutes. So we'll see what happens. Uh, But to it, maturity is simply an understanding of what is and what isn't important. That's what I spend spent the past however many minutes to say a nine word definition an understanding of what is and isn't important. That said, that's, that's what I spent uh, three minutes getting to I hope that I hope that you enjoyed that. But the question then is, why do people generally correlate age with maturity? That's something that, uh, you know, usually gets usually happens uh, when you get older, you'll be more mature and whatever. And that's not too hard to answer. As you grow up, the more you experience, the more you experience, the more that you understand what is and what isn't important. Uh, you're a teenager and you get mad about dumb things because you haven't seen or actually found things that matter in life. As a teenager, you're trying to find those things and so you take everything seriously and that is why your age group is known as a moody, cringy, stingy, and whatever else e group. Of course, some people experience a lot at a young age. They just they end up with a little more knowledge uh, sometimes than children should ever have to learn, but some people, you know, they go through a lot. And those people seem a lot cooler at younger ages because they understand what is and what isn't important. And so they're just way more level-headed. I know those people. Uh, It's not exactly a fun time. I think kids should be kids and be dumb when you're dumb. Just do it. It's your right as a human being to be stupid when you're a teenager. I I believe at least. Go ahead. Be dumb. Whatever. Don't be too stupid. Avoid the alcohol. Avoid the drugs. But I'm not your dad. Don't let me slap the Hennessy and the future pancreatitis out of your hands. Now, what is it actually, uh, you know, what it actually translates to Uh, or, you know, what maturity actually translates to uh, when you know and what, when you know what does and doesn't matter. Really, it just makes you calmer. It makes you a lot more level-headed. To use big words, 
or a big word, a more equanimous style award, imperturbable, phlegmatic. There are a few. I hope you have four Google tabs open now. You're welcome. These people don't get mad when people insult them because they know that it doesn't matter that someone is insulting them. They don't get angry when the weather suddenly turns. They know that the weather doesn't matter. Getting to the destination matters. Sure, it may be a bit more challenging, but whatever. Grab an umbrella, okay? How do you then gain maturity? How do you learn what does and what doesn't matter? Well, like we said earlier, experience, keep living, go through life, the ups and downs, and make sure you really observe those ups and downs. Realize what does and doesn't actually affect you. You'll come to realize that an infinitesimal amount of things actually affect the course of your life. And handling those few things are a topic for another episode. But you know, of course, grow up isn't exactly a reason anyone wants to hear ever, especially people that are young. Trust me, I've been there. The other way, you know, when I was younger, and it's like, oh, you'll get it when you're older. Yes, yeah, screw you. Why can't you just teach me, you stupid, like, idiot? Wait, does That means you don't effing understand it. Don't sit here and tell me I'll get it when I'm older when you don't understand it either. All right. And so anyways, I bullied adults as a child. That was my that was my occupation. But the other way to gain maturity other than just live life experience and grow up uh, is to ask questions talk to the people that have been through it so if there's ever a thing where people will tell you you'll learn when you're older uh, maybe you'll understand it when you're older and that's something we talked about last week But you can learn it right now. And the way that you do it, well, obviously, you can't just age yourself five years and have all the experience of aging for five years in 10 seconds. But you can go to people that are old. You can go to your gampa, your gamma, you know, whatever it may be. And you can talk to the old people and ask them, you know, hey, these are things that I've been wondering about. What's it like? you know, experiencing it. And some adults, they really are just dumb losers that won't tell you anything. Those people suck. Find the ones that are genuinely interested in the youth. Find the ones that are generally or genuinely care about the youth and they'll help you. They'll answer whatever question they have to the best of their ability. And they, if just because they care doesn't mean they're good at it. Some of them might have great intentions and suck at it. And that's fine. Be grateful to them for trying. But go around and ask a lot of questions. When I go to the eye doctors, uh, wherever, you know, when I go to my eye doctors, a lot of the people that have my eye doctor, it's a small clinic, they're pretty old. And so oftentimes when I go to the waiting room, waiting for my, you know, doc to doc or the nurse to come, you know, do the whatever they want to do to my eyeballs. uh, There's usually an old person in the waiting room. And so I generally, like always start a conversation with them. Sometimes it's multiple, sometimes it's just one. And I always try to talk to them. And they always not oftentimes they don't give me too much. A lot of times I'll end up teaching them something. (laughs) But I, I enjoy talking to them. So you know, Uh, Some people say respect your elders. Some elders probably don't deserve respect. But what I will say is talk to your elders. That's something that's important. And something that I do is I treat everyone the same, regardless of age, regardless of anything. Talk to everyone the same. Treat everyone the same. And I think that's a great way to go about it. If you're a garbage person, then treat everyone the same amount of garbage. Don't treat someone else, someone more garbage than another person. All right, no playing favorites. And so same with old people. I treat them as I would treat any of my contemporaries. And I talk to them generally in a similar fashion and manner. Uh, even, you know, some of my more vulgar manners of speech, sometimes I'll do it. It really depends on what the conversation is. Because even with my peers, like, I'm not always saying dumb, dumb, vulgar things all the time. I'm not talking about penises every two seconds. But yeah, treat everyone the same and talk to your effing elders. That's That'll help you learn a lot more about life a lot, a lot quicker. And then you can implement it into your life. Even if you don't understand it, just go ahead and integrate it. Uh, de- obviously, you, you know, you want to test it out a bit be a scientist. If an old person tells you something that doesn't mean it doesn't mean they're wrong per se, but it might be different now, or you might have a different sort of understanding. Like a lot of old people, they really are just cynical and old. And I would, I'm telling you as someone who has talked to hundreds and hundreds of people, and that has been through a fair amount in life, and talk to many more people that have been through a fair amount in life. Look, people are generally good. All right, people are 
pretty nice usually they'll help you out more often than not and so you know if someone some old person says don't trust anyone ever yeah maybe don't integrate that one into your life think about it for a bit don't just accept it no you you can accept it don't just don't just implement everything everyone tells you all right people uh, take everything people tell you as advice or even not even advice but like their life experience and you can use that however you want to. Like when I tell you to do things on this podcast, that's my life experience. That's my thought experience. That's everything that I've been through in an amalgamation. Of course, I would, I personally, I'm biased, of course. I would think that what I say is pretty accurate because I have tested it personally. I've had other people also test it with me and I've seen how it works. And so that's why I'm generally, I would believe credible on the things I say. But again, even just because I say it, I mean, think about what I say. You don't have to implement all of it. Should you? Absolutely. But Do you have to? That's not my problem. Again, I'm not your dad. If you want to get pancreatitis, that's your problem. But, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, Ask the old people questions or in the moment before you react to a situation, ask yourself, does this really matter? And if it does, why or how does it matter? And that's extremely, extremely hard to do. But if you can do that, GG, you're going to gain maturity like 8 billion times faster than everyone else. I said that I was going to talk about integrating, understanding last pod. No, I said I did talk about it last podcast. I completely lied. Apparently, I'm talking about it this podcast. I just glanced at my script again and realized that's the next topic. And we might not even get to it. So we'll see what happens. But the last thing that you can do to gain maturity is, of course, listen to this podcast. I quite often sit here and tell you what does like what doesn't matter. Uh, this is subjective to a degree. Uh, different things matter to different people. That's why I'm not sitting here and telling you what does matter. And depending on what you want in your life, what does and doesn't matter is up to you. No one can usually tell you that unless someone wants the same thing as you or they've gotten the thing that you are what you want, then they'll, they'll help you out. But there are some universal things that people seem to think matter when it really just makes it harder for you to achieve what you want to achieve now to keep it a buck 50 with you i've talked about maturity way longer than i thought i would and i should probably leave the original topic that i was going to talk about after maturity which was like chasing carrots on a stick for another day and so now that i've ate up half of my time with that this might i said it might be hard to hit 20 minutes and now i feel like i'm gonna go over god dang it every time i say that Uh, But, you know, what am I going to replace the carrot on the stick topic for? Well, I already spoiled it for you because I'm stupid and I thought I talked about it last week, but it was just me misremembering it because I wrote this script two days ago. Uh, But uh, you've seen the new title, obviously, Knowing versus Understanding, something I've probably talked about before, but again, reusing content is great, so why not? I'm going to see if I can fill up the rest of the time with this, so let's go ahead and do that. Other than knowing and understanding, I also want to talk about integrating, though. Uh, That's a little bit different, but different enough to talk about. Uh, Let's start with the difference between the three. Knowing something is pretty simply just knowing it. I know that the sky is blue. I know that negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all divided by 2 times A is the quadratic formula. And I know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, kind of. It's a bit more complicated, but yeah. Uh, it's not too hard to know things. Read a book, watch a, v- watch a movie or something, hear a fact. Pretty simple. Um, understanding is deeper than that. Uh, it's understanding why the sky is blue, understanding the proof that proves the quadratic formula gives solutions to a quadratic equation, understanding the mechanisms the mitochondria uses. I know that the sky is blue, but I understand that the color is a certain wavelength being processed by the eyes and the brain. And the reason that the sky appears blue is the refraction of light from the sun that creates a wavelength that appears blue to us through our human eyes and human brains, even though in reality, it would probably be more of a purple color. Um, I, you know, I know that heat is how hot something is, but I understand that how hot something is is based on the kinetic energy of the molecules in the object. It's best explained like this. If someone tells you a movie is bad, you may know 
that the movie is bad. You may have learned that, but you don't truly understand that the movie is bad until you watch it yourself. And we've talked about enlightenment many times, but the reason that we all do the meditation and stuff is not because that makes you enlightened, but understand that those things aren't necessary to be enlightened. I guess enlightenment is like ultimate maturity to tie it in back to maturity, I guess, because that's like the ultimate what does like, you know, I, guess, I want to say you don't care about anything in the enlightenment, but it's way more complicated than that. But yeah, understanding lets you manipulate things and it lets you like play with things. So if you n understand the proof of the quadratic formula, then you might be able to make other mathematical formulas, or you may be able to simplify the quadratic formula in certain cases. When you look at a quadratic equation, you'll be able to just be like, Oh, this is what it looks like. This is what it does. And it just gives you way more control and way more uh, way more power. I don't even want to I don't want to use that word. I, I had a word and then it just slipped in my mind completely. It's on the tip of my tongue. But uh, I Yeah, I lost it. It just gives you more uh, ability and more control over something when you understand it. Uh, but the last thing is integrating, uh, you're listening to this podcast, and there's a chance you listen to other self help things. Maybe you watch Matt Diavella, Ali Abdal, Thomas Frank, Captain Sinbad, etc. Maybe you read meditations by Marcus Aurelius, stillness is the key by Ryan holiday. Why, why did I say holiday so weirdly? or The Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker. You can know that being more stoic is better than you. You can better for you. You can know that notion increases your productivity. You can know that a Zorro circle can make you less stressed. But unless you integrate those things, honestly, how much does it matter? You can sit there and know everything, but if you don't do anything with that, what's the point? Now, for those of you that are mature, you can answer that question. The point is that the journey to learn all of those things was the point, the journey. But let's not be too mature here, all right? You clever chicken tender. What's the point is if you don't integrate, why watch all of those videos, read all of those books, listen to all of those podcasts, except this one, it's because it's great regardless of anything. But what's the point if you don't integrate the knowledge? Integration is extremely important. I didn't just research sleep, I actually sleep correctly. I didn't just research happiness, I got out of negative mental spaces. I don't just read about enlightenment, I do the exercises. Integration is what makes knowledge manifest into actual value. And does that mean I integrate everything? No, I know a ton about marketing, but I don't do it. I know a fair amount of practices to grow on YouTube, but I'm still procrastinating on that. I'll, com I'll be completely honest with you here, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm perfect, except for the days that I'm perfect. I do my best to practice what I preach. But sometimes I slip and sometimes you'll slip. But as a mature person, you realize that looking at your slip and hating yourself for it is useless and doesn't do anything. Knowledge is great. You need to know things. Understanding is better. You need to understand things to truly have a grasp on it to truly be able to play with it and mold it and use it. And if you understand how in let's say in circuits, the test I failed like two weeks ago, if I understood it, not only did I know how to do it, and which I could maybe do the questions, but if I understood it, I could do it faster, I could apply it to way more things, I could do a lot more with it. I understand how sleep works. I don't know how sleep works. I understand how sleep works. And because of that understanding, I can tie it to so many other biological processes, I can connect it with so many other things, I can make analogies toward other things. The reason that Albert Einstein was so good at explaining things was because he understood things, he was able to explain things with a cup of coffee with a napkin, he was a, like he was famous for his like, cafe, uh, like, lectures, like he was able to explain these really, really complex, like, things in physics and theoretical physics by like swirling a spoon around a coffee cup and saying this is like this is what happens look at the center like that's how black holes pull things like you know he was he had such a great understanding he was able to convey it so much better and so you know sometimes it is good enough to just know something and have it be a fun fact you don't need to understand everything. Okay, that's just not necessary. You don't need to become a sleep expert, just know that sleep is important. Integration is also extremely important. If you know something, apply it, manifest the knowledge and apply it for God's sake. Knowing things doesn't change your life. Understanding things may not even change your life. Integration is what changes your life. Learn more, 
integrate more and understand more. Maybe another day I'll flesh this out more. But for now, I'm probably running low on time. I have no idea since this is a script. And now it's really weird because I'm reading a script about writing a script. Yep. And yes, I am running low on time. It's like 21 minutes. I definitely went over God dang it. I better be able to export this. Um, but you know, yeah, that's all then unless I have something else to say, do I? Probably, but I finished Seven Deadly Sins. It was pretty good. Same things as I said last week kind of apply. There's a movie that comes out when this episode is out, or one week ago. I started watching Remake Our Life. I also finished it. I, I, I This script was written a little bit ago, but I finished it. It was great. I loved it. I highly recommend it. If you've ever seen Real Life, it's really similar. There's a guy that doesn't really do well in life, and he kind of gets jolted back to his younger self uh, and follows his dreams or whatever. The art is great. The story is touching. I love it. Uh, Jeremy Zucker's album has came, come out. I really like it. It's actually been on repeat. Crusher, Jeremy Zucker. Very, very good. Um, Therapist is incredible. Uh, it, uh, intercourse and Cigarettes. I'm not going to say the effing song name, but you get it. That I love that one as well. Those two are probably my favorites on the album, but there's a lot of good ones. I really like it. So go, go listen to that. Uh, anyways... Uh, but other than that, uh, oh, I started Tokyo Revengers going back to anime. Tokyo Revengers, I started it. I'm on like episode four. It's so it's pretty good so far. I, I'm I'm liking it. But I'll get back to you when I'm done. I also started reading the webtoon for Tower of God, and I'll probably talk more about that next week because I'm effing timing out here. But other than that, last week school was all right. Two exams means a lot less homework from those two classes. But the week uh, that this episode comes out this week was probably a ton busier. But you'll hear all about that next week, maybe, which is also when Apple's event hopefully is if so invites were sent out on Tuesday, when you're listening to this like four days ago, three days ago, whatever. But anyways, until then, take care, much love. Thank you so much for listening. Peace.